Whoever just joined, say hello. I'm late because I had to get something to eat. Hey, let's talk about it. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. I hope y'all don't mind me eating. I'm really hungry. I got me a, a cheeseburger. Uh, it don't look like the picture from when I ordered it, but I got me a double bacon cheeseburger from Sonic. Hey, y'all. Hey, Julia. And I got me um, a root beer with sweet cream and vanilla in it. Hey, little Miss Libra. Okay, I know I'm amongst friends and I'm country, so I'm about to eat something. I'm hungry. What are y'all up to? I'm smacking, I'm sorry. But what are y'all up to? What are y'all doing today? Ask me questions or let we can just talk about what's going on with y'all. I got somebody here, but he's promised not to say anything because I'm not revealing him in any way. Hey, oh, hey, how are you? I'm eating and I'm about to be smacking and enjoying my dinner because uh, y'all are my friends. I just had a long conversation with my neighbor and found out he's from Iran. I moved here from Canada. Oh, that's really neat. That's really neat. I'm an introvert, but I do like striking up conversations with people and hearing their stories about where they're from. And you know, they're, I like hearing people's life stories. And there's something about me that people will, I think it's just cause I'm country, but people will tell me, I will learn more about somebody in one minute than their husband probably knows about them. It's crazy. Sorry, I'm reading. Yeah, that's good. Y'all, I'm telling you now, the best bacon cheeseburgers come from Wendy's or Sonic. Nobody else has good bacon cheeseburgers. Now, Wendy's, I think, has the best. You know what? Five guys, but they're too dang expensive. You go to five guys, and it costs you about $10 million to get a burger. So, I haven't I haven't been to five guys in a minute. It's crazy. They're expensive as hell. But, um, yeah, this burger is good. You know what? I've never had a five guys shake. I might have to take out a loan and go get a burger and fries and a shake from there. I don't even understand why they're so expensive. Do they have banana shakes at Five Guys? Yeah. I can't do Five Guys all the time. They cost too much. That's a luxury dinner. Yeah, you know, Wendy's. I haven't been to Shake Shack. Um, yeah, Wendy's. I love their. Um, whenever I go there, I either get me a um, a spicy chicken sandwich or a, the baconator. And depending on the day, I'll get it with fries or chili with chili sauce. But Wendy's burgers. Those to me are the best burgers. And I've had burgers from restaurants and all kinds of places. Wendy's has the best. Their Baconator is the best burger. No. Burger King, 
I like that charbroiled taste on their like their cheeseburgers. So every now and then I will like I mean like I can't tell you the last time I went to Burger King and I'll go there and I'll get like a double cheeseburger or something. And Wendy's their double stack is good too. They're and I like their nuggets, but I think they changed them up and they made them smaller. Yeah, they I, they they're not full and and chunky like they used to be. You know what? When they I don't think they still have that fish sandwich because that Wendy's fish sandwich was elite. That Wendy's fish sandwich, I would probably eat it every day if they had it on the menu. You know what? They just built a Shake Shack about 10 minutes from me and I keep telling myself I'm going to go. So I'm going to have to make a note to go. One of y'all ever have to comment on one of my posts this week and remind me to go to Shake Shack because there's one 10 minutes from me and I haven't gone yet. What do, If I go to Shake Shack, what do I need to order? Yeah, if you go to Wendy's, get a Baconator. In and out. I'm going to say this. If you're white, don't take offense to this. In and out to me is like white people food. Like, they ain't no seasoning on it. No, no oomph to it. I can't get into it. Whataburger, for those of you who live in Texas, I can't get into it. Not for me. It's not for me. And they always have a line wrapped around. And I don't get it. I don't get it at all. So, is the Shake Shack just as bad as um, Five Guys with the prices? Shake Shack chicken sandwich? From Shake Shack? I don't know. The only chicken sandwiches I eat are from uh, Wendy's or Chick-fil-A. I can't eat everybody chicken sandwich. A cheeseburger and fry. I'm going to have to try them. I'm really interested in this milkshake y'all keep talking about. in and out is nasty. I cannot get into it. There is no flavor to it. It's just a plain in and out burger. It's like when you used to go to your grandmama's house. And you used to ask her, can you go to uh, to McDonald's or somewhere? And she said, we got burgers at the house. That's what In-N-Out Burger tastes like. I, I don't, I'm not feeling it. Banana pudding shake. In and Out has a banana pudding shake? Huh. I have been craving banana pudding. I got a banana cream pie in my refrigerator. Um, and I have been wanting banana pudding, like a shake or something. I think there's the Sonic that I went to, they have a banana pudding shake or cheesecake or something. chicken sandwich mm -mm. if it's not wendy's or chick-fil-a i don't want the chicken sandwich you can have it i'm not doing that <laughs> ice no i just want banana pudding okay so 
sometime this week, I want one of y'all to comment on one of my posts and remind me to get a banana pudding shake from Shake Shack. Because, ooh, is it is it like thick or is it soupy? Because everybody don't make good shakes. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to look at their menu when I get off this live. And maybe I'll go by there tomorrow and try them out and post a video of me trying out their food to see what they have. I'll probably go with my daughter. Okay. I love thick milkshakes. That's why I like Sonic milkshakes. I had two Oreo milkshake, Oreo cheesecake milkshakes from Sonic last week. So good. I love their stuff. Hey, Nikki. This, this burger is starting to get cold. What are my thoughts on having sex on the first date? My thoughts are do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, just be safe. Um, I would advise against it, not because of the sex part, um, but because of what I do and the women that I talked to over the last several years. Um, cases that I've heard, I don't want you murdered. So I'm not telling you not to have sex. I'm telling you, I want you to live. And I don't trust these men. So unless it's a situation where you know this person, you know, maybe y'all were friends before or something where y'all got mutual family members, I would not go to somebody's house or trust them in my house if I just met them a couple weeks ago. Never. That's that's my only concern about that. Um, but as long as you're safe, you know, and and you got some background on this person, do whatever you want. I don't care. It's all up to you. My channel is not a traditional, prudy, nun type channel. My channel is for women to be safe, for women to be confident, and for women to do what they feel comfortable with. That's what I want for women. And I also want a shake from Shake Shack now. Can you give me a shake? No. Okay. Um. Moo, y'all. I don't think they got one of them down here by me. I ain't never heard of it. That's not heavy. I'm having dinner with y'all so we can talk about stuff. What do you want? What advice do you have for women in their early 20s who've never had a boyfriend or even a first kiss? Sometimes I feel embarrassed. Don't feel embarrassed by it. These are men. Ew. <laughs> no. Don't be embarrassed. Ew. Um, no. Um, I, I get the feeling of maybe, you know, Everybody else has had a date or has kissed a guy um, and you're, you still haven't or whatever. Um, you ain't missed nothing. You have not missed nothing. Take your time. Still vet. Don't be in a rush. It'll happen when it happens. When the stars align at the right time, you will be with the right person. And that's my advice on that. Almost got rushed to the altar and dumped his ass in November. Found you and burned right after that. Yay! Hey, Tanya. I had my first kiss when I was 17, and for some people, that's considered a late bloomer. There's no such thing as a late bloomer. There's no such thing. Not around here. 
not around here. We don't do that. We don't put dates on things for women. You're going to do it when it's meant for you too. There's no early, there's no late. It's when it's going to happen, when it is right. Hey, water. Any advice um, to those just now entering their healing journey? Um, be honest with yourself. That's going to be my advice. Um, I've gone in, I've gone through therapy. I've been in therapy um, for a long time now. I'm hiding somebody. They're starting, y'all. They're starting. Um, just if therapy can only work if you are honest with yourself. And there were plenty of days when I went into therapy and my therapist would look at me and be like, now Jules. And I knew what that meant because you can, you might be able to lie to yourself, but you can't lie to somebody whose profession it is to sniff out your bullshit. Um, <clears throat> and it took me a couple different therapists to find the one I had. So that's another tip that I would give you is, um, Make sure you take your time and find a therapist that you're actually comfortable with. I hear so many stories of women saying, I went to therapy once and my therapist was horrible. Yeah, because you went once. There's tons of therapists out here. Did you try another one? I've gone through quite a few before I got the one that I got that I have been seeing since 2018. So find a good one first and foremost. Be honest with yourself, second. And that's that's the most important thing. And um, I noticed once I entered into therapy, I began to lose people. I still am to this day, if you've not seen the videos that I posted. Um, because you become comfortable with yourself. You know, I've lost um, people who I thought were my friends once I... Don't get, I'm telling you, therapy is not for the week. Get ready to lose, to win. I've lost friends, like literally, like magic. Once I got into therapy, friends and family <laughs> started to do like this. Okay, I'm done with this burger. But once I got into therapy, it began to weed out the people in my life who just didn't mean me well, you know? Um, and I think that I once heard somebody say that you are the sum total of the top five people that you hang around. Um, I don't know what you mean, hypo, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but um, yeah, you ha you're going to have to change your friend circle because I began to notice that if you hang around women that are male centered while you're healing, if you're not careful, you'll be right at, you'll be right back in that again. And um there's this video on TikTok where the woman is saying is is it wrong to separate yourself from friends who are male centered? And so far the response I've seen to that video has been positive. And it's just a bunch of women like me saying no. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, because there, the work of being, of not being male centered is work that you have to do daily. And I noticed that if I hang around certain people who are just obsessed with dating and my boyfriend did this and my boyfriend did that, and I was swiping on the dating app and that, and can you believe what Jimmy said? Then I'll start to get caught up in that. It's almost like drugs. If it, if it makes sense, once you get healed from being an addict, you don't go to a bar again. You don't go saying you don't go back to the drug house again. You don't go back to the things that had you um, wrapped up. You have to stay away from that, and you have to constantly check yourself, and you have to work through it. That's that's how serious um, that people need to take um, this decentering man journey. Who you hang around, um, what you watch on TV. Hey, Tierra. Hey, y'all. Who you hang around, what you watch on TV, what you listen to. Because it is, it's daily work. Even the guy that I'm talking to now, um, 
sometimes I have to, and I, there's a, there's another creator who did a video about this same thing that she has to catch herself to, um, where you find yourself acting in those male centered pick me ways again. And you're like, wait a minute, what the fuck? No. And you have to check yourself before you wreck yourself. It's daily work. Anybody that tells you that they're a hundred percent cured and they're a hundred percent male centered and they never struggle, they're a fucking liar. And I'll fight them. Tell them to come to me and I will fight them over that. They are lying to you. They are trying to shame you. They are trying to make you feel bad about yourself. Don't believe it. Every woman and man on this planet, him, her, she, they, them, all of us have been affected by patriarchy in some way. All of us. Every single last one of us. You, me, us, everyone. And it's daily work that we have to question ourselves and be willing to step outside ourselves and just make sure we're, we stay in check because it's so easily, it's so easy, um, to slip back into old habits. I'm sorry. I'm talking way too much. Hold on. Let me pause and read y'all's what y'all are saying. Oh, this is good. It's root beer with vanilla and sweet cream in it from Sonic. <clears throat> See, don't bring, unless it's a mixed company get together, do not bring your man because that's a quick way to make me stop talking to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. That lets me know that you're male centered. That lets me know that you can't walk five feet away without having your man attached to your hip. That lets me know that if I tell you something in confidence, you're definitely gonna go run and tell John. Like, no, don't do that. Don't, no. And, and to be quite honest with you, that man shouldn't even be comfortable just chilling out with you and your friends. He should feel so awkward. He should be like, no, babe, you go do your thing with your friends. Why are you sitting there, Chad? What are you doing here? I I'm sorry. I, I went out. I went off. But don't do that to me. My, my friends know better. Leave your husband. You can have your husband. I'm, I'm proud of you and, and Mark. But leave his ass at home. My friends got common sense. They would never do something like that. But if you want me to stop talking to you, bring your man over unannounced. Bring your man over to something where it's girls only. Don't do that to me. That means you have not grown up. This is not high school. You and Bobby can be apart for a couple of hours, okay? Mm-mm. I'm not the one for that. No, no. Absolutely not. Yeah, the only thing, now don't get me wrong, um, for a living when I make content, my area of expertise is men, okay? But outside of this app, amongst my girls, we, we don't talk about men. <laughs> Unless we're talking about, you know, the content that we have planned or, you know, some crazy troll that commented something stupid. Um, but yeah. That, that's crazy. Don't bring your man. And especially don't bring him in my damn house. I wish somebody would. I will fight. <clears throat> yeah, I can't do it. Um, me and my mom, I, I went no contact with my mom a couple years ago. And it was one of the hardest things I have ever done. But let me let me let me give you an example of how male centered she was. So my mom started like um, kind of like a like a talent agency business, right? And back before the pandemic, um, I was trying to act and auditioning for different things. And I was like, okay, well you can represent me then. I'll be one of your um, one of your clients. So it it came to a point where I would notice that she wouldn't do nothing for me. She wouldn't find me any auditions. She wasn't contacting anybody. She wasn't setting up any meetings. And every time we would call to talk about, okay, well, what have you done to help me find work? It would somehow turn into, 
an hour long conversation about this guy she's representing and she got him a speaking engagement and she just doesn't understand why he's acting this way. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad you got him speaking engagements. I would like to get some stuff too. So that's just an example of dealing with somebody that's male centered. And in this case, when they're your own mom. So I wound up having to end that situation. It's awful. It's really awful. I, I really, and, and <clears throat> I have a family member who got her, her children taken away from her because she was chasing up behind men and, and her children were in um, some awful situations. So the state had to intervene because she wouldn't protect her children and leave these men alone. Um, and you know, people get, people get so mad at me and they make fun of when women like me say to decenter men, I'm so I'm so tired of everybody talking about it. But this is why I'm so passionate about it. One, because I know there's moms who will sell their daughter for a pack of Cheetos if they could get a boyfriend. Two, I've witnessed a family get torn apart because of someone being male-centered. Also, on TikTok yesterday, I was scrolling through and saw court footage of a judge sentencing a man and a woman. She allowed this man to torture her little daughter and together they wound up boiling the daughter alive. So now the baby is dead. So when people make fun of the whole decenter men movement, they, they don't understand just how far some women will go to get a man. So I get it. You might not need this content or you might not think you need it, but there are women in prison right now who, who have lost everything behind a man. There are women whose children aren't speaking to them because of a man. There's children dead because their mama let a man, you know, have his way in that situation. So I, I think it's really unfortunate that people don't think that there's a place for um, content like this. And I get emails <clears throat> and messages on Instagram because I do work with women and, and, you know, they pay me and everything to help them figure things out. And, and the stories that I have heard over the years, y'all, that shit changes you. Decentering men is very important and it's not something that you just do until you get into a relationship or stop or start talking to someone. You need to be decentering men even when you're married, even when you're in love, even when you're in a relationship. You still have to decenter men because if you're not careful, you'll give up your whole identity to make your husband happy. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not betraying yourself. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be level-headed. And, and, and I have friends that I check in with on a daily basis. And I know based on past experience, if I feel like, if I'm dating a guy and I feel like I can't, I can't be honest, I need to be honest. Because I need, I, we need our friends to check us to make sure we're staying focused. I remember my sister, she made a whole list of things <laughs> that if a guy did, she would break up with him. And um, her and her friends have copies of each other's lists. So if they come to each other and say, well, so-and-so did this, they'll be like, well, that's on your list. You said you would break up with a guy that did that to you. So if you don't, then I don't wanna talk about it anymore. And that's how they hold each other accountable because honestly, nobody got time to be sitting on the phone for every, every day talking about what, what he did and what he said. Oh my God. I get it if you're going through a breakup and you're ending those toxic situations. And I don't wish bad on anybody, but I don't have time to sit on the phone every day and talk about what he did. Yeah, I know what he did. He did the same thing last week and he's just getting worse. Nothing new. So...
it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. It really is. And, um, and, and, and the sad thing is, is that, you know, if we're not careful and honest with ourselves and, and doing the work, we are also all, everybody is one bad decision away from ruining their life or somebody else's. So I always wonder when I hear these cases like this, I'm just like, what, what happened to this woman? What was said to that woman that, that flicked a switch off in her head that I would rather have you, you, this man, than my daughter? Like, I'm always intrigued as to what, I know for me, it was religious programming. Now, the funny thing is my parents weren't religious. They never pressured me to be religious or anything, ever. Um, I learned different beliefs from just wanting to belong. So I had friends who were religious and I would go to their church and I would hear different messaging and the religious programming of being a good wife and serving your husband. And it's your responsibility if your husband cheats and your husband is the leader. That's the stuff that got me believing in a lot of the pick me stuff that I believed over the years. Yeah, I would rather, I, I, I've heard a lot of people say that they, they don't want to tell their friends the truth because their friend might never speak to them again. You know what? I'll say this. I've been in some toxic relationships. And to this day, I'm still friends with the people who were honest with me. I'm not friends with the people who said, you know what? I always thought something was wrong, but I never said anything. I'm not friends with them anymore. Um, and, and I've become the type of woman to where I would rather you get mad at me and never talk to me again than to be sitting there lying and co-signing to the bullshit. I don't want to know about you getting hurt every week. I don't think it's okay that your man's cheating on you. I don't like what he said to you. I would rather you get mad at me and never speak to me again. And you know that I told you the truth. And maybe one day you'll realize it. Maybe you won't. Some people don't. But I can't sleep at night. I feel like I'm just lying to you. I can't sleep at night seeing something and just not saying anything. I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Yeah, cheeseburgers are good. Wow. Oh, you know what? Um, uh, ter completely changing the conversation. I thought about getting a, um, I like the conies that they have at Sonic, but I was like, that would be a little too messy to be eating on camera. But um, anyway, I think they meant something else. Y'all, I'm going to have to start blocking people again. Oh, my gosh. Can I just have a live without people coming in and, and talking crazy? I just want to have fun. Oh, my gosh. I can't deal. I can't deal. It's happening, y'all. This is why I got off my live yesterday, because people got on here talking and acting crazy. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't see myself doing that. I don't know how to make moderators on here, so I got to figure out how to do that eventually. <laughs> but y'all, ask me some questions. What's going on? I don't know how to do, I don't know how to do moderators. Okay, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I'll figure it out. Y'all, this is not a live this is not a live where y'all are here to flirt and stuff this is not what that is y'all are disgusting Are these bots? 
Because they all just came at once. What's happening? Um, Mara, do you want to be a moderator? I don't know how to do Okay, I think I figured it out. Hold on. Can manage blocked words and change chat modes can review and remove chat message i don't know which one is which somebody talk about something positive How do you heal from your trauma? I don't think I can ever date again. And that's okay. Um, you have to go at your own pace. What I love about my therapist is she encourages me to do whatever it is I'm feeling at the moment. If I decide I want to start dating again, then she's going to help me focus and take care of myself. If I decide I don't want to talk to men, then she's going to help me focus and take care of myself. Um... So it's just about finding a good therapist and being honest with yourself and surrounding yourself by positive people. I did not go to the Houston. You know what? Y'all are going to laugh at me, but I was I wanted to go because the Jonas Brothers were going to be at the Houston Rodeo. But I couldn't get tickets. So that didn't happen. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm reading what... I, I'm supposed to be wearing my glasses, y'all, and I'm just hard-headed. Thank you. It's all messed up now because I just ate a cheeseburger. These are press-ons. I'm going to have to do a live where I put my nails on so y'all can see me put the nails on. Yeah, this is at this age right now. I'm um, I'm reparenting myself. I'm gonna post the video where I talked about it. Um, kind of my journey of of being the parent to myself that I never had growing up. I think I'm gonna post that video tomorrow so that y'all can and can watch it and kind of get insight into my journey. So be looking out for that. I'll have on a purple shirt. I usually post inside secret. I usually wake up at around 7 a.m. and then I'll post my videos literally at 7 a.m. every morning between 7 or 8, maybe 9 or latest or the, at the latest. So between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Central Time, that's when I post my videos and I try to post two every like um, Sunday through uh, Friday and then I don't post anything on Saturday usually. Um, Thank you, Jennifer. Y'all talk, ask questions, please. This is an open discussion for us. And I'm, I'm hiding people who pop up and say inappropriate stuff. Um, how did I find a good therapist? Um, I Googled, I Googled therapists in my area. And I would go see one for a couple visits. And if it just wasn't gelling, then I'd go see another one until I found the one that I have now. Now, there is a company that is called Open Path. Google it. Open Path, what it is, is if you don't have good health care, if you can't afford therapy, they will charge you a one-time flat amount of $60. You will have access to all of their therapists and how much you pay is based on whatever so you could pay anywhere from zero dollars to thirty dollars for each visit so check out open path if you if you are looking for therapy that's affordable um my daughter um she saw a therapist not too long ago through open path she's seen two through open path um, a couple of years ago and I have nothing but good things to say 
So look at Open Path, check them out. Like I said, it's the lifetime one-time fee of $60. And then whatever that particular therapist charges for whatever you're seeing them for. Like I said, it could be anywhere from zero to $30. You'll just, they, they'll have their, um, once you pay your fee and you can look through their catalog of therapists, they'll have like, their services and their prices and if they do virtual and if they can prescribe meds if you need meds and all the things that they do and then you can reach out to them and um you know ask questions and set up an appointment but don't just have one bad experience and then that's the end of you going to therapy you might have to go through one two or three therapists until you find one that you can click with I, that's a big mistake that a lot of people make and it just annoys me because they'll be like I went to therapy one time and my therapist was really mean to me but did you go to another one though did you keep trying so yes check them out and see what um what you can find out about them Mentors, who are my mentors? Um, my high school teacher who became my godmom, her name was Miss Green. Um, and then the rest of my mentors are people I've never met. <laughs> Viola Davis, um, Angela Bassett are my mentors. I've never met them before, but yeah. Um, yes, Viola Davis, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, if I ever met Viola Davis, I would start crying. I don't think I would be able to, I don't think I'll be able to handle it if I met Viola Davis. She's just too much. She's, she's like the sun and I can't, I can't even, I would love to meet her one day and she would probably look at me like I'm crazy. But if I ever met Viola Davis, I think I would pee on myself. I would do I would do something stupid. I, I just know it. So somebody else is getting hidden in my comment section because they're being mean. Yes, I read her biography that she did, and she also narrated um, the the um, audio book. And she's gone through so much in her life. Like I probably, honestly, honestly, if I would have gone through the things that she has survived, I probably would have not, I would not be here today. I don't think I would have made it through a lot of the things that she has made it through. I really don't. So I really love her. Hi, Eva. Y'all are not talking. If I miss your question, I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up with everything and, and keep track of like people who are coming on here saying dumb stuff. So, I don't know. Um, I got some, I need to change my nails out tomorrow. I'll probably do it. Um, I don't know. See, I have my nails on so well that sometimes it hurts to take them off because they're like on there. That Kiss brush on glue, y'all. My comment section is not the place for lonely men. Hi, Serene. Here comes the ignorant comments again. Oh, there's a solar eclipse. <clears throat> Yeah, my nails are really strong. Like in order for them to pop off, I really have to like put, you know, bang my hand, my nails on something. 
but these have been on for, don't get me lying. I want to say about a week these have been on and they're not going to go anywhere. They've been on for a minute. Um, I do have some, uh, some nail remover that really don't work. I spent $6 on it for no reason. Thank you, Gabby. I got some um, cat eye nails that, you know, those little like reflective looking nails. They have like the shiny line when the color reflects off of them. I got some of those. I think I'm going to do those next. Did any of y'all see that Bob Marley um, movie? The movie about Bob Marley? My daughter wanted to see that um, two weeks ago. We went and saw it. It was pretty good. Yeah, I always, I'm trying to do shorter ones because they're a little bit more practical for me. But I do love, the, I do love long nails. <clears throat> I'm not telling anybody my sign, but I will tell you about this cheese. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet because I just don't want to because it loses its shape. It's this um, squeeze cheese. You know, like when you when you're stressed out or something. And then I saw it because somebody on TikTok was talking about it. But then I learned that once you squeeze it, it loses its shape. So I've been afraid to open it. So this is fun. Eventually I'll open it, but like once you open it and you squeeze it, it, it loses its shape and I don't want it to lose its shape. Kinda, except it doesn't it doesn't get its shape back. And I didn't want to say that word because there's inappropriate people on here. But yeah, the only difference is it doesn't it doesn't get its cheese shape back. So I've been afraid to open it because I don't want to mess it up. I don't do the whole pity thing, so that's not going to work here. But yes, it's kind of like that. It was only like $6. I ordered it from uh, Five Below. No, I, actually I did. I tried to order it from Five Below because that's where the woman on TikTok said she got it from. But they were sold out. They didn't have any in stores. So I got it on Amazon. It was $6. <clears throat> Yeah, you're just sitting there with your with your stress cheese. I think a stress ball would be more appropriate for a meeting. I'm just blocking people. <laughs> I'm blocking people left and right because what is happening? Oh, this is so good. Oh my gosh, the drinks at Sonic are top tier. Get um I also like to get the um the orange soda with sweet cream and vanilla in it. It tastes just like a cream sickle. I am trying to block people as fast as I can. Spiritual things I'm converting to Judaism.
Ooh, dumplings. I haven't had dumplings in a minute. I wonder if there's like a good restaurant that has dumplings here. For somebody who lives in the South, there's really not a lot of soul food restaurants. You gotta travel all the way to Dallas, which is a nightmare. I thought about getting pizza tonight, <clears throat> but wound up getting, um, but wound up getting um, Sonic instead. And I kind of wish I would've got pizza. I want a pizza with, um, with sausage, bell pepper, and lots of cheese and light sauce. I just, ugh. Yeah, I'm on it, y'all. <laughs> I'm on it. Hey, Anna. Y'all like my necklace? I got it from um, K Jewelers. I also have it in blue. And it's so funny because when I got the blue one, I was like, I wish they had it in red. And sure enough, they got it in red. And they all, ooh, excuse me, y'all. They also have it in purple, but the purple kind of looks cheap. I might do that tomorrow. Get me that kind of pizza. I like kind of like a Philly cheesesteak style pizza. As a matter of fact, I got Philly cheesesteak hot pockets in my freezer. So I don't need to get a pizza because I'll be wasting food. Actually, I talked to my dad yesterday, so that's weird. It's getting weird in here, y'all. <clears throat> I get my rings anywhere that I find one that's cute. Now they have, um, surprisingly, they have some really good pizza places here. Um, back when I was auditioning and acting and doing that sort of thing, I used to work at, um, I used to work at a pizza place. Um, and it was really good. I used to eat there all the, I used to eat the food all the time. Really good. I would work there and I would do, um, Uber Eats, which was, I just, I'm, I did Uber Eats for, almost two years and it was so stressful. Please y'all, this is why I say, tip your Uber drivers, tip them because that is such a stressful job. And if times are hard and some for some people that's the only jobs they can get and there's a lot of wear and tear on your car and Uber does not cover, you know, accidents and things like that. Um, unless it, you know, it's your fault. Um, and there's a lot of gas and it's just a lot of work, especially when it's hot, when it's raining outside. So if you have an Uber driver, unless they are just flat out disrespectful, please tip these people 18 to 20%. If the, if the service was that bad to where you can't give a proper tip, then write a complaint. But I, I was an Uber um, delivery person for two years back when I was uh, acting and trying to balance all that. And it was tough. It was so tough. There were days when I was like in my car crying in between deliveries and people would have these large orders and, and wouldn't give a tip. And I know I was a nice, I would know I was a good person. So tip your food delivery people. And I get it, you know, companies need to pay people more money, but it is what it is. And, and we live in a time where people got to get a job wherever they can make money. It is what it is. And as someone who gives generously, I encourage you to be the same. I get blessed because of the fact that I'm generous. And that's all I'm going to say. But if you're selfish and it's not my responsibility to pay these people, you're the one who took that job. I'm going to tip you a dollar. I'm not going to tip you at all. Don't be that fucking person. Don't be that person. Tip within your budget. You know, you, you are ordering food out of convenience 
they're driving their car, they're out here fighting the elements, they're stressed out, tip your fucking delivery people. My gosh, I could preach a whole sermon about that. If they get your order wrong, a lot of these restaurants, they tape the bags up so they can't check your food. Um, so like I said, unless they disrespect you, then write a complaint to the company, but tip these people like, geez, I had a driver who couldn't find my apartment and, um, he was like, he was like 10 minutes late. I didn't get mad at him cause it is hard to, a lot of these apartment complexes are complicated. So if you live in an apartment complex, if you live in a high rise, understand sometimes it's hard to find parking. Sometimes the building numbers aren't visible at night. Tip your delivery drivers or get the fucking food yourself. Now I'm done talking about that. <laughs> I went off on a whole thing about delivery drivers. Hey, Lulu. I don't know who Palios is or Paleos. Mellow, <gasps> Mellow Mushroom. You know what? They have one in... Um, I think I'm closest to the one in Arlington. I used to do deliveries from there and I've never tried them. Y'all are giving me so many ideas. Thank you. Y'all are giving me so many ideas of places to try. Yes, tip your people. And I'm gonna say this and a lot of you might get offended, but I'm gonna be honest with you. My fellow black people, Tip your people. When I was an Uber driver, here the best tippers were Hispanic people, male or female, best tippers. I could get their whole entire order wrong, still tip, and generously. White guys, they were the next best tippers. White women, it depends. Black people? What's up? The worst tippers. I almost cussed one of my friends out because we ordered something together and she only wanted to give the guy a dollar. I'm like, no, ma'am. No. We got to do better. We got to do better. And I know it's a stereotype, but it's, there's truth to it. Please hear me and don't take this the wrong way. In my experience, having worked in the food service industry before, we are the worst tippers. That is horrifying. And y'all are also not gonna like this. I've heard a lot of white people say that they don't like to take tables of black people because they don't tip. And I get that that's very offensive, but it's the truth. You heard it from me. Tip your people, 18, 20% or more. Show appreciation for the service or get the food yourself. I haven't done, I didn't do anything big. I was just starting. Yes, if you are generous, you will be blessed. I I will buy, I will pay for lunch, I will pay for dinner, I will pay for groceries, I will anonymously donate to things and and um you know my daughter she might invite her friends to go somewhere with us and 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 um whatever I give always comes back every every single time. Better late than never. Yeah, I I used to hate doing apartments at night because those buildings, sometimes they're not in order. You got building A here. Building B is all the way in the back. Then the stairs are crazy and then parking and gate codes and crazy.
Yes, tip your servers. I, I always do a minimum of 18%. And if I feel like I shouldn't tip you, then that means I need to talk to your manager because the service was horrible, but I'm always tipping. If you make a simple mistake and I know it wasn't your fault, I'm still tipping. But if you are, if you make me feel like, oh my gosh, I can't tip you, then I need to talk to your boss because you're doing something really bad. But I tip my people every single time. And, and those delivery drivers, they get your tips. I know because I was one. Every tip you send goes to the drivers. Or you can give them cash. I had people who would, um, if they wanted their food on their doorstep, they would leave an envelope with a tip in it, you know. Or they would greet me at the door and, and give me the tip in my hand. But I do know for a fact that the delivery drivers, they get, their, they get the tips that you give to them. Thank you, Jacqueline, or Jacqueline, however, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, it depends. If I'm going to pick up my food, I probably won't tip. Um, if I'm going to the place to get my food, you really got to just blow me away. Um, okay, I'm lying. I usually at least give a dollar. Like if I go pick up my food, my food somewhere and it asks to tip, I'll, I'll give like a dollar or something. So that's about it. Sorry, y'all, for the inappropriate things people are commenting. But y'all keep talking. I'll stay on here for a couple more minutes. Unless y'all are done. My favorite season is fall. I hate spring because that's when my allergies act up. I hate winter because I hate being cold. It makes me cranky. And summer has some good days and it has some really bad days. And I live in Texas and it gets so hot that it messes up your tires. It's just a, a disaster. <laughs> yes, it is very hard dealing with people. Oh, hi, Kimberly. I hate when people tell me that I'm not, I'm not mean. I mean, if you're mean. When people comment mean things to me and they say I'm rude or nasty, it's usually because they said something and they don't like the fact that I said something back. I fight back. Um, but yeah, no. Yes, I had a Sonic double cheeseburger with bacon and then I had um, it's root beer with vanilla and sweet cream in it. I've had people tell me I look mean. That's fine. I'm 89. The shakes at Sonic are top tier. The shakes at Sonic are top tier. My lipstick is all messed up from eating that burger. I like their cheesecake, their cheesecake shakes. I, uh, last week I had a taste for the Oreo cheesecake shake. I had that twice, really good. The strawberry cheesecake shake. You can get any kind of combination at, at Sonic.
My necklace is from K Jewelers. I have it in um, the Titanic blue and I have it in the red. Um, Anna, I think you're being funny, so I'm not gonna answer that question. Um. <clears throat> Thank you. It's one of my favorite necklaces to wear. And you know what is sad? I have the blue one. The blue one um, is modeled after the Titanic necklace. And then they came out with the red one. And it's so funny because black people weren't even allowed on the Titanic. So why the fuck would I want that? But it's a pretty necklace though. Um, so, I don't know, just little fact, little interesting fact. I think this is a, this is a lab created ruby and the other one is a, a lab created blue sapphire. I don't have a... Mm, um, my favorite movie is still Magnolias. I know, yeah. So it's kind of bittersweet when I wear the necklace. I love the necklace. But black people weren't allowed on the Titanic. <laughs> I think there was one black man on the Titanic. <clears throat> and he wound up surviving. I'm not sure the relevance of whatever you're saying I can give a fuck if it made a lot of money. I'm just telling a historical fact about the Titanic. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Claude. So what are y'all about to get into? You know what that means. I'm about to go to bed. Um, it's been a crazy day. I actually like doing these lives. You know what? I'm going to have to make it like a thing every week where we have dinner. Y'all go get your food and then I'll go get me some food and we can sit and talk. Would y'all like that? If I did something like that? I don't know. You know what I want? Y'all are gonna laugh at me. I like that um, when you go to the Chinese restaurant and they have that imitation crab with the cheese or the imitation lobster with the cheese. It's got like imitation lobster, cheese, um, I think maybe cabbage in it. I love that. I could really go for that right now. They, they have that at a um, Chinese buffet I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go get some of that tomorrow. <laughs> you got dressed as a mouse. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Yes, dinner and chat. That's what we should call it. Dinner and chatting. No, not ragoons. It's just like the imitation lobster. It's like like a casserole. It's all mixed up. It's imitation lobster with some with like not like the shredded cabbage that's in an egg roll or a ragoon. But it's imitation lobster, little, you know, pieces of cabbage with cheese. And it's all together in like a casserole. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's not ragoons. Some shenanigans on Tubi. Did y'all hear that they stole Risa Tisa's story and made a movie? And she's suing them. But I don't, I don't know what the name of it is. What is the name of that stuff? Is it just... Imitation crab and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to get some when I do another live. And I'm going to show y'all because I think y'all think I'm crazy. But I know, I know what I'm talking about. I know it's like they, they serve it. It's like this really popular Chinese buffet um, that's close to where I live. And they have, I mean, like a whole like area of food and sushi and catfish and ribs and chicken and this and that. And then they have a whole dessert section. And the only thing I go there for is for that imitation 
lobster stuff. I don't even know what it's called. I don't know. I could be eating tires for all I know. Imitation salad with cheese. I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to go and ask them what's it called so I can try to make it. Because they sell the imitation lobster at the grocery store. I'm pretty sure I can imitate it and make it. I love that she's getting all the things that are happening for her. I really do. I'm happy for her. If you hate her, you hate me. I can't. I can't have the Risa Tisa hate. No. So, anyway, y'all, I'm going to go to bed. So, we'll have to do, I'm going to call it, um, what is it that we said, dinner and chat. I have to do another one um, probably later on this week. Um, hopefully, y'all can make it on. I'll, I'll get something to eat. I'll post something to let y'all know to get your dinner and everything ready. I love Wendy Williams. She was controversial, but hey, I'm considered controversial too. So, but anyway, y'all, I'm about to go to bed. I had fun talking to y'all. Thanks for coming to my live and having dinner with me. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for your love and support. I appreciate all of you. And I will be back um, to do another live probably this week. Good night.